Hello, hello, and welcome back to a, another episode of The Way of the High Priestess. Today's episode is really special because this is the first ever episode that I am doing live in person with a dear friend, sister, colleague of mine. This is Dr. Meredith McNeil. She is a holistic mental health therapist and consultant, and she has become a dear friend and sister of mine in just a matter of months. And I'm so excited to be having this conversation today. We are filming this from a huge sofa in our house. I call this room the Zen Den. We've got a vibe going. And in fact, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to start this conversation with is how we prepared for it. Mm. And so Meredith came over to the house and uh, we sat outside on my back porch. We made wonderful sparkling water spritzers. We caught up on life. And then we went upstairs to our workout space and each of us chose a song and we danced and we felt sexy and we got into our bodies and we moved. Mm And it was such a wonderful way, one, to spend time with you as a friend and also to prepare for a podcast recording. What was that like for you? Yeah, absolutely. I loved it. Um, I love that we took some time to intentionally drop in and catch up, get connected. And then also the dancing, like I, that just felt so natural for us to do is to get into our bodies and bring out that sensual energy as we get ready for this podcast, where we're going to talk about all the sexy stuff. And so it just felt, felt really aligned for what we're doing. And it was also just really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a really fun way to hang out with a friend Mm -hmm. where it's not always required that we have an in-depth conversation. Sometimes we can just dance together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can turn the camera on and film ourselves dancing and have fun (laughs) to a burlesque song. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so starting with that, I know that you've been on a huge journey personally, professionally, when it comes to sensuality, expression, sexuality, femininity, what has that journey been like for you? Mm. <sighs> well, there are so many ways I could describe this journey and it's been a span of many, many years that it's been in development, but I would say in the past uh, year and a half, probably my femininity has been, been coming out a lot more very naturally. I started just simply by witnessing lots of women really being expressed in their feminine energy and thinking like, wow, that that's amazing. She's so beautiful. Look at the way she moves, look at the way she speaks. Like I've never seen anything really like that. Someone being so authentically in their feminine energy. And so, you know, I started following people on social media that were expressing themselves this way. I started looking into content, started reading things, started talking to women about what being a woman means to them Mm. and took a course on feminine embodiment that really taught me so much about what Mm. it means to be a woman in all aspects. And that was a really big starting point. And since then that ended about this time last year, Mm -hmm. Uh, in the past year, I've just really been making it my own, all the information I've learned and making it my own, feeling into it, seeing what feels right for me and the way that I dress, Mm -hmm. the colors that resonate with me, really bringing my life back into color, bringing it back to life and the way that I move. Yeah. Just even just walking around my kitchen, um, the way that I speak, you know, I used to speak very much from up here and like had things to say. And now I speak from, from a much more grounded yeah. place. Um, that's a lot deeper and more intentional. And, and all of these things have made me feel more feminine mm. and the feedback that I get from people that have known me for a while, or that I've just met even tell me like, they see how feminine I am. And it's always yeah. such a compliment because it's really big difference from the more masculine energy I was in before. 
And so this, this softening yeah. is how I would describe the process has been absolutely magical mm. and colorful and sweet and delicious. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. There's so many, you know, as you were talking, there's so many things you said that I want to ask about, but almost I want to not ask about just yet, because what I really want to ask is for you to tell a story that is of a moment when you felt so sensual or when you really were feeling yourself and I invite you to tell the story with as much animation as you want, with the gestures that you want. If you're watching this on YouTube, then you can see Meredith and all her feminine glory. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening, then I invite you to really tune in to your sense of hearing and to Meredith's pace, to how she enunciates her words, to whatever would allow you to resonate with her. Um, I've never done anything like this on the show before, but I'm like, let's get even deeper into the vibe of sensuality and feminine expression. And let's invite our listeners on that journey and then have a conversation from there. Yeah. I love that. So love any, that. any story you would like. Many came to mind. Okay, great. Oh, let's <laughs> see which one wins. Um, so there's a recent one. <clears throat> I went to the Austin Tantra Festival um, a couple weekends ago, and the whole weekend is about expressing yourself and your sensuality and letting yourself feel sexual energy and it being a safe place. And on the first night, it was a three day thing. On the first night, I actually felt a lot of resistance. I was, I was pretty anxious at first. The container itself was just very vulnerable, very expressive. And mm. so many people were already so comfortable in their sensual and sexual expression. And I think it just like, I felt so much where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not adjusted to this yet. Mm. And all of this stuff around, you know, like, who am I going to be here? Ooh, how am I going to express myself authentically here? Which is an interesting question. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, on the second day, we started with a Qi Gong workshop, which is kind of like Tai Chi, but in a dance format, it was a dance like workshop that mm. uses the energetics within our bodies and around our bodies. And that workshop really put me into my body. It mm. really grounded me. Um, dancing is something that always allows me to feel my feminine energy. My sensuality comes out the most when I'm dancing. Yeah. And so in this workshop, I started just with the movements that they were guiding us through. And eventually it led us into just like moving in the way that we feel naturally called to with the energy that we're feeling in the moment. Yeah. And we could meet with someone, lock eyes and just have like eye gazing while we're dancing to each other. <laughs> and I got really into this. All of the fear just kind of dissipated because the movement was really taking over as I was getting more present with my movement and my body. And I just start doing, you know, all of these hand, mo hand movements that just really really get me in yeah. to this, oh, just this really yummy energy. Yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh, I have so much of this. Like I want to share it with someone. So I'd go out and find someone to dance with or in front of, and I really connected energetically with a lot of people in this workshop, um, who I could tell were witnessing were admiring and I could witness and admire them in return. And mm. this, this giving and receiving through energetic dance with people. Yeah. And not feeling hesitant to move the way I wanted to move and it feeling so natural and easy for me to just let it go. It, it was a really beautiful experience. And, and there was even a moment when we had to pick a partner mm -hmm. and I was standing next to this guy and we looked at each other and we we're like, let's be partners. And the facilitator said, okay, one of you is going to sit down and the other is going to dance for you. And I was like, I'll go first. Cause I was feeling it. I was, I was feeling it. I was in my body 
And you know, this guy was like really cute. And so he sits down and the music starts and I'm just like eye gazing with him, like locked eye contact and just moving my body and, and swirling my hips and doing all these hand motions that like are bringing his energy into my field and putting my energy into his. And it was a very, very sensual experience, very intimate experience, highly energetic, like very mm-hmm. energetically charged. Yeah. And to have someone lock eyes on me to witness mm. my most raw, authentic, sensual expression. And for me to curate that expression, knowing that this person who's attractive to me is watching me. Ah, it was, it was hot. It was sexy. And it was so much fun. Yeah, And I felt like myself more than I ever thought I'd be able to feel in a moment like that. And, um, so this felt like the appropriate story because it's really one of the first times that I've been in my raw sensual expression full out with a man just straight up watching me Mm. and loving it. Yeah. And not looking away, not, you know, disconnecting, but really being present in that experience and me feeling really safe and really good in that interaction. Mm. There was a, there's so much to that. And it was just, it was so beautiful. It was a great experience. Wow. Yeah. How are you feeling now as you tell the story? Mm, It feels just like, wow, one, like, I can't believe I did that. And also two, I can't wait to do it again. (laughs) (laughs) Like I, you know, I, I want more of those experiences with more kinds of people. And I think too, something with that is in this festival, there were so many moments where I'd partner with women too. And we got to witness each other and admire each other in our sensual expression And I really love that thought too, having really sensual sisterhood relationships with women that I love and Mm -hmm. trust. And that, that sounds really, really attractive too, not just with men, but just life in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That there's something so potent and real and raw and inherent in that energy Mm. I for for myself but I think for most women and there is just this flow this it's almost like this feeling of coming back home Mm. to ourselves there's a, a deep remembered embodied familiarity to moving and being moved and making sounds and being in this natural expression that feels good, that feels enlivening, that, that turns us on. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, I would say in the past, in the past year or so, I've made friendships, I've created friendships and relationships where that energy is welcome. And it's different than how we think of like overt sexual energy. Um, so it's, it's been fascinating to really play with that and to feel the power of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So since accessing this, I, I don't, let's call it sensuality, but you can call it something else. Mm-hmm. What has changed in your life? Mm-hmm. Like you were this other person not too long ago, like right before I met you, right? That was <laughs> when you would kind of time yeah. box that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's only been a few months that this is really, really come out. Okay. So if you're listening, you are catching Meredith, like hot off the press. She is in a beautiful, like Phoenix rising transformation. And I have just witnessed you come into yourself so much. It's been beautiful. So what impact has being in this energy had on your life? And who were you before? Hmm. I'll start with the second question. Yeah. Who I was before. She was just hiding more, hiding a lot more, not sure, you know, who she could really be herself around, 
which when I reflect on that now is I, I put my emotional mental safety in the hands of other people. Mm. You know, my, I used to deal with a lot of social anxiety and still do sometimes, but when that happens, I notice I feel like I can't be fully myself right now. I feel like I need to hide. Yeah. Cause there's something about this environment that doesn't let me feel really safe. And so a big part of what I've done for myself in that is creating safety within myself, mm. um, really learning how to feel safe in my body without relying on anyone or anything else outside of me to do so. Yeah. Um, but I would say who I was before all of this started becoming unleashed, which is I had a lot of past stuff still weighing down on me a mm-hmm. lot. And even in ways I didn't realize it was being held in my body in ways I didn't realize. And it created the social anxiety. It would, you know, question, oh, do these, you know, do these people really want to connect with me or do they just want something from me or all of these relationship patterns and, and not really wanting to give a lot in my relationships, um, feeling hesitant or resistant to show up fully for people because I wasn't sure that it would be reciprocated Mm. or that it would be received in the way that I intend it to be. Yeah. Or I would feel like, oh, if I'm, giving so much, then I would create these expectations and what I wanted to receive in return. And so it's all this stuff around relationship dynamics, of course, yeah. um, that, that have really through a lot of work and through, um, ceremonies and, um, my own reflection and personal development, I've been able to really recognize those patterns and work on changing the behaviors and the thought patterns to shift out of those mechanisms. Right. And, um, at this point now, uh, with this central energy, with me being more feminine, I feel way more grounded. Mm. I feel really powerful Mm -hmm. in the way of like, someone could say anything about me and they could just be like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And see that for what it is rather than really taking it in personally. Right. And, and creation and manifesting right now feels really enhanced in Mm. ways that it hasn't felt before. Yeah. And, um, really just feeling unshakable, uh, something Mm. else that I've been feeling lately and people will take this word how they will, but I feel fearless. Yeah. I feel fearless in the way of, anything could happen tomorrow and it may be horrible and awful and painful, but I know and trust myself to navigate whatever happens next in a way that's aligned for me and in integrity. Mm. And as long as I have that, then I feel really safe and I feel really good with myself. Yeah. I guess that's really what it is. It's like my self-love has been incredibly enhanced. Mm. The intimacy I create with myself has deepened exponentially. Yeah. And I'm more courageous in my expression. And with all of this, I am a part of a community of people that I've been calling in for a long time that Mm -hmm. I absolutely love. (laughs) (laughs) And honestly, I've had so many happy eras of my life. Yeah. But I feel the happiest I've ever been in my life, in my work, in my relationships, everything right now. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy you're in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. I'm so happy you're in mine. (laughs) I'm okay. So I imagine that for anyone who's listening, they heard a lot of themselves in you, Mm -hmm. in who you were before. And they may hear a lot of themselves in who you are now. And, or they may be aspiring to embody some of the qualities that you described. Hmm. So this might be a loaded question, but what, what made the biggest difference for you? Because that's the, the kind of identity shift you're talking about is happens in some ways at a fundamental level, but it's also like a quantum leap, like a, a completely different set of narratives, beliefs, thoughts about the world, a different 
shape you inhabit. Like literally you say that, you know, you're, you walk through space differently. Mm-hmm. You speak differently. You mm-hmm. express differently. What made the biggest difference? Two things come to mind. Um, one is learning. Uh-huh. Learning from those I found myself admiring. Um, because whenever we see something in someone, especially with women, see something in another woman that we admire or we think, oh, like I wish I had that. Like that is the invitation mm. to learn. What do you need to create that? Yeah. And that's the question I asked myself. So I went into learning. What does it mean to be a woman? What is feminine energy? What is all of this stuff about nurturing my senses to make me feel like a woman, right? Like learning a lot of information first for me. And then also being more receptive. Mm. I didn't realize at first how much feedback I was getting from people in my life about how they saw me. Yeah. And it'd come in very direct or indirect ways. And before I would defend myself and, mm. and challenge what people would say a lot of the time um, without realizing, oh, they're, they're providing something for me that I could look at if I choose to. And so becoming more receptive when it comes to relationships changed a lot for mm. me. Hearing people when they tell me how I'm affecting them and just believing them flat out, like that's what's happening. Even if I was intending something different yeah, and being more receptive to the flow of things, mm. not trying to force hustle or make something happen that I want. Yeah. And rather moving into just trusting that things will unfold the way that they are meant to. Yeah. So just really being more receptive in my relationships and with my life, um, that combined with just learning more and more information to create more knowledge and wisdom. Those were, that felt like the core of getting to this point. Yeah. So, okay. I'm bridging the gap in some ways because in that second part, you said, um, becoming more receptive and I, my brain automatically goes to, okay, what helps a woman create receptivity? Mm. So feel free to answer this wearing your professional hat, your personal hat, both something else. What, because I, I, you know, I've heard when I was, you know, when I started my feminine embodiment journey, it's like, yeah, surrender just open your heart, (laughs) you know, like all of these like beautiful, noble sounding directions. And I was like, okay, yeah, but how do I do that? Mm. So how does a woman go about creating or being more receptive and welcoming in that feminine energy? Yeah, it's a beautiful question. I love that you correlated it with opening your heart and surrendering because yeah. it all, it all is the hand in hand. It's all the same kind of, uh, this is something I had to learn. I spent almost a full year learning what it means to be receptive through trial and terrible error. <laughs> <laughs> That's always how it happens. <laughs> yeah. And, um, cause this is not something I learned in my training. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And now that I have learned it on my own, I do teach women and men that are in relationships how to be more receptive when they're in a relationship or even a friendship or a family relationship. Um, Because if there's a lot of conflict, there's probably a lack of receptivity somewhere. Mm, mm, Okay. So teaching someone to be more receptive looks like first pausing a lot. When someone feels a pain, Mm. or someone feels offended or the need to defend themselves or they feel like this person's blaming me for all this stuff those are the first clues to pause Mm. to Mm -hmm. pause when that feeling comes up or when that urge to defend comes up pause maybe take a few breaths take five minutes take 45 minutes to take a moment and say, 
what could be true about this? Mm. Is there something that painfully resonates with mm. me in this? Because typically that's the case. Yeah. We want to get defensive because something's hit a nerve because there is a truth mm-hmm. in what has been said. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and maybe sometimes that's not the case. A lot of the time there is a lot of projection happening, but also it's usually both. Yeah. Yeah. And so taking a moment to pause when, when that feeling comes up, taking a few breaths or taking a moment and seeing this person is giving me some type of reflection about myself and how they see me, how I'm affecting them. What is there for me to own up to right now? Mm. And coming from that kind of consciousness, coming from that kind of mindful intention can totally change the energy of a conversation. Yeah. Because then imagine if you're like, oh, wow, like, let's say someone told me that I have been selfish. I take a moment to see, okay, this person has seen me as selfish recently. What do I need to own up to? Oh yeah. I did this thing that, that was, I could see how that could be really selfish to them. Yeah. And then to tell this person, I see what you mean. I did not intend for that to happen or for me to affect you in that way to own up to that, to be receptive to the feedback and take ownership of what is true, that person is going to be a lot more understanding than if you're to defend yourself. Yeah. And also they get to feel seen. They get Mm -hmm. to feel heard. They get to feel understood. Yeah. And that's going to bring people into deeper connection rather than disconnecting from being defensive. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So much came up, but you mentioned connection and disconnection. And we were talking about this before we started recording that Mm -hmm. this has been something that you've really been exploring, um, particularly with your clients and how you're seeing them create and form relationships, perhaps with self and others. So tell me what you're seeing there in terms of connection and disconnection. Yeah, this is foundational in my work. Actually, it's, it's connected to a theoretical framework that I use at the base of my approach. Um, it's called relational cultural theory. Um, but the, there's, one, there's one concept in this theory called the central relational paradox. And what it says is that as human beings, we are wired for connection. Mm-hmm. It is one of our basic needs to feel like we belong somewhere. And so we spend our lives seeking authentic connection growth fostering connection Mm, mm -hmm. yet we have experiences in our lifetime that hurt us when we feel rejected or betrayed and we start putting up these guards to protect ourselves therefore disconnecting Mm. with these guards that we put up and so the paradox is that while we long for real authentic connection Mm. We have all of these strategies in place to keep us disconnected out of protection. Fuck. (laughs) An example of this, um, it would be, you know, the typical, you go out with someone, you have a good time, and then you don't hear from the guy for like a couple weeks. Yeah. And you're like, well, I'm not going to text him first. No, they have to text me first. And then you end up ignoring each other to get the other's attention. Yeah. Which that's not going to create the connection that they really want. Right. Yeah. I mean, it takes such a massive level of self-awareness, one, to start to see our own patterns in this way and how we play out and embody this paradox. I think Mm -hmm. we've all done that. Um, But when I'm thinking of this scenario that I'm hearing you talk about and what it would take to go from disconnection to connection, I think the antidote is open-hearted communication, Mm -hmm. knowing oneself first and then communicating that with no expectation of how that message Mm -hmm. is received. Mm -hmm. But for the pure intention of expression, And then hopefully with the reciprocal, like listen to understand on the backside. Mm -hmm. So tell me about 
self-expression in that way, because I know that that's been a part of your personal journey, but also that's like one of the cornerstones of your work with clients too, is helping them become more expressed. So let me narrow that question a bit and feel free to tie in pieces of your personal journey, but what are the most potent things for people to know about Mm self-expression? So when I think of expression, I think I have to really know myself really well to express myself fully. And most of my clients come to me not realizing that that's at the basis of everything, but coming to me to really want to understand themselves on a much deeper level. Yeah. Because there's self-awareness, which is a beautiful step to creating change and expressing yourself and knowing yourself, but self-understanding is another level. So if you know, okay, I have this pattern where I shut down when someone becomes vulnerable with me, for example, that's good self-awareness, but self-understanding would be, I learned how to shut down because of this relationship I had with my mom when I was younger, where being vulnerable was really unsafe. And that's how I learned this pattern, right? Self-understanding. And so for people to strive towards understanding themselves on those really deep levels, facing the stuff that feels painful yeah, in order to heal it, Mm. because Mm. we all have these patterns that come up yeah, and those patterns are giving us the opportunity to see what do we need to understand about ourselves yeah, so that we can heal it every pain, every pattern, everything that we might feel ashamed about that we do or say, all of those moments are teachers for us to see, is this really my truth or is this something I learned along the way? And it can feel really scary to say, no, I don't want to go that deep. Like I don't want to go back into all that stuff. Yeah. But if we don't, it stays in there. And We might heal one pattern by changing the behavior. It'll show up in another way because the root is still alive. Mm. We can't just fix the symptoms. We can't just treat these things that come up at individual level. We have to find the root first. Okay. So once we find the root, if as we go on our heroes and heroines journey to the core, Mm -hmm. then what? Because like... Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Then all of the, then all of the great magic happens. Okay. That's so. a great way to <laughs> frame it. Yeah. And you know, these processes look different for everyone and there's lots of ups and downs and it can be really messy at times. And it's all worth it when you have that day where you realize, wow, this one insight just made me realize that none of this matters mm. or you end up in a relationship that you could only have dreamed of because you never thought you were worthy for it. And then here it is. Yeah. That means there's been healing that's happened and that makes facing all of the hard stuff really worth it. Yeah. And also I think with the perspective shift of, Oh, I'm, I'm asking myself these questions and it hurts into I'm asking myself these questions. Pain has arrived. What is it here to teach me? Mm. That shift can change everything about how people begin to understand themselves so that they can begin expressing themselves. Because when we get more and more understanding of who we are and why we are the way that we are, then we can start asking the questions. Okay, so what does this mean now? Who do I want to step into? If I want to let go of this thing and and I want to move out of this thing, if I want to recalibrate these behaviors, now what? Yeah. What, what am I working towards? Who am I, who am I building now? And that can be really, really fun. Mm. And that's when the expression can really start coming out is because, okay, you've, you've healed a lot. You've created more understanding. You've created more safety with yourself of knowing, wow, like I, I had all of these things happen. I moved through it. I feel more like myself now. I'm not sure quite yet where I'm going, but I know myself well enough to know that I can create something different. Yeah. And 
that can look like so many things. It can look like so many things. For me personally, when I started moving into that phase, I one day got rid of like 60% of my wardrobe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just started buying new um, items of clothing, of accessories, all these things that were totally different than the style I'd been into, but it felt more like me yeah. now. And that has been spread into my relationships, the way I show up, how I give to people, uh, my business, and the way that I work with clients, um, just generally the way that I move through the world. It starts with really deep self-understanding and having the courage to face the stuff that's been painful mm. in order to heal it. Yeah. Yeah, I can attest to that 100%. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you've definitely inspired me wardrobe wise. <laughs> A shopping trip is due soon. Yeah. Um, but that I very much experienced that over the last two years in particular, since Ani and I left New York, mm. I felt like I chose to pluck myself out of this comfortable little corner of New York city in this stable apartment that was manageably sized and priced. And I was, I was literally thinking about it today as I was getting ready in the bathroom. I'm like, wow, I've come a really long way. And the past two years were just like massive obliteration in what I now really perceive to be a very profound and beautiful way. And going through it, it felt like I was crawling through the pits of hell in some moments. I didn't know if our relationship was going to survive. In fact, there were times where I was like, this is definitely over. Who the fuck am I? why have I lost all of my confidence or, you know, just gosh, so much. Mm -hmm. And today I look back and I'm like, wow, I, I really was living at that time. What felt like a very safe life, which was nice for my nervous system and was necessary. And then completely found myself in a trauma response for, you know, the better part of the last two years and now I look back in this growth and expansion and, and I think, wow, I really lived a life where at the time it was perfect. And if I were to be living that life now, it would feel like I were playing small. Hmm. And it feels good to be in this place where I'm like, holy shit. I somehow <laughs> it feels like I was chewed up and spit out. And, mm -hmm. you know, of course I'm at the helm of the ship which is like the whole plot twist, but such a twisting, winding journey full of emotions and feelings and sensations and doubts and anger and transformation and beauty and orgasm and fear and like the whole range of life in a very short amount of time. Mm. And <laughs> that has been the beauty of it. Something that I'm uh, I think has been so helpful in what you've expressed are one, you've shared uh, different mindsets and frames to view this transformational process through. And you've also shared ways of expressing things that are alternative to how most people express and communicate. Is there anything else that as I ask this very broad question <laughs> that just comes to mind and is presence for you in something that would be helpful for people who are in the, some of the deepest parts of their growth and transformation journey, particularly for women who are coming into their identity, who are creating their identity, who are starting to really harness their sensuality and sexuality, feel their emotions, express themselves. What is just being presence for you in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I thought of when you were describing that is like how much pushback we get as women yeah. on expressing ourselves, Ugh. whether it's our wants, our needs, our sensuality, our sexuality, what we wear, um, how we want to interact with people. We always get pushback mm -hmm. because it's so powerful. People are Ugh, afraid. So powerful. <laughs> um, 
So what I would say is that even when that pushback comes, even when people question you or doubt you, or if you lose relationships in this process, if it doesn't feel like a full body, fuck yes, then fuck it. Fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) If it's the job that keeps you hidden or doesn't let you speak your mind or doesn't let you share ideas, fuck it. If it's the relationship where you can't be yourself or you're not supported or they're not encouraging you to do whatever it is your heart wants, fuck it. If it's the house that you live in that doesn't inspire you anymore and there's all this stuff attached to it, fuck it. Follow what feels so good Mm. and you will end up in such a good life. Yeah. And that, and as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that's such a big part of expression is giving your full fuck no and giving your full fuck yes. Yeah. And never waiting And that in-between, maybe not yet phase. Mm. If you're full on with your yes and full on with your no's, then you end up with the life that's most in alignment with your expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a really simple way to um, encapsulate that. Mm. Not necessarily easy all the time, but a, a super simple way to have a litmus test or a guide, does that feel good in my body? Do I feel turned on? Do I feel like a fuck yes? Or does this feel like a fuck no? Mm -hmm. Does it feel like a not now? Like there was something that I saw in your expression and that I heard differently in your expression when you started on that point. Mm -hmm. What came through your body? Yeah, it feels powerful to eliminate the maybes, Mm. right? I used to be someone who really attached myself to the potential of things, the potential of people with friendships, romantic relationships, opportunities even. And rather than just seeing it for what it is in the moment, being present and tuning into my body has also been a skill I've developed being aware, wow, there's stuff happening actually in my body in in activation or a numbness around these people or in this situation. So becoming aware of my body and its Mm -hmm. sensations has been a big part of this, but doing that has allowed me to see if it's not a full body, fuck yes, then it's a no. Yeah. Because if we touch on, if we attach to the maybes, well, maybe, maybe this will work. Mm Mm-hmm. That, that brings up a feeling in my body right now, even just saying that, like, maybe this will work. No, it either works right now or it doesn't. Yeah. If it's a, maybe this will work, then what are you trying to force mm. rather than allowing the flow to yeah. occur? Yeah. And for me, getting really clear on what my yeses and my nos are, eliminating everything in between. You know, I, I, it's just, it's created so much joy, so much alignment, Mm. so much safety to express in my life. Cause there are relationships that I no longer have that I choose to no longer have. Yeah. There are jobs I quit to open my own business so I could do exactly what the fuck I want. Yeah. (laughs) And it does. It feels very empowering. Yeah. And I, I wish this feeling for every woman and person on the planet. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Just, I want to follow up on this for people who are listening. How did you know what a yes felt like in your body and what a no felt like? Like what, Mm. what is your sensational experience with that? Yeah. Um, What I notice when I'm feeling like, Ooh, this, this could be a yes. Yeah. Um, I, well, sometimes I search for more information. Sometimes I don't need to. Right. Um, typically though, I feel sensation in my chest. Mm -hmm. 
that usually feels like excitement. Mm. And with that also maybe a little bit of nervousness. Yeah. Cause usually almost always the best things that I've chosen to do have scared me mm. Uh, mm. on some level. Yeah. Um, and then just knowing that that's something to be excited about. Um, so feeling excitement or feeling intrigue and curiosity, those are my clues for my yes. Um, I really notice when something feels like a maybe or not yet, because I'm, I feel confused. Mm. If I feel confused, then I know, okay, that's a no. Yeah. That's a no right now. Right. Um, and when it's a full no, and I know quickly it could look, it could feel like lots of things, but typically there's resistance Uh or there's fear without excitement or when I feel like I need to hide, Mm. then I know that something about this is a no. Um, It's taken a lot of practice for me to tune into my body like that and to understand that all of my emotions have messages for Mm. me. Mm -hmm. And that's an incredibly powerful aspect too, is, is really taking every emotion that comes up, even if they're subtle and seeing what is this here to teach me? Yeah. Great question. And that is how I've become more in tune with my body is learning from my emotions Mm. and my sensations. Bam. Emotions and sensations. There's Mm. a very, (laughs) a very um, rightful place for thoughts and the way we perceive the mind works, logic, analysis, beautiful functions of our brain. And I think we're, we are entering and creating a paradigm, particularly as women and female leaders, where we also put emphasis on the value and importance of sensations in our body, Mm -hmm. uh, our emotions, so many other aspects that were not traditionally considered at all in the human experience. Mm. And it's, incredible. And I know that that is a huge part of the work that you do personally, but also professionally. Mm. So as we start to come to a close, um, is there anything else that you wish to express that you would love for women to know, or that's just coming through for you? That's like, I got to share this. Mm. Yeah. Um, kind of what we were just talking about. It's more so a question for women. Um, because women and men, but, but specifically with women, we have strong emotions that come up and many women allow them to come and many women wear their emotions on their sleeves and it's beautiful. And there are women that, mm, you know, try not to try not to look at that, try not to feel that emotion, just kind of put it away. Um, but my invitation for all women is to honor every single emotion that comes up because it has a purpose and it has a really important message. Every time it comes, the anxiety has a message. Mm. Has many big ones, usually. Depression has many big messages for us. Um, Sadness, grief, joy, excitement, sexiness, whatever it is, all of them have something for us. They are our guides. Mm. And my question for women is, can you open your heart enough to receive them? Because that's, it's the most important thing to see. What is my body telling me? Because our body knows so much more than our minds do no matter how much we like to think our way through things. And it's also, in my opinion, one of the best ways to embrace and embody our feminine energy is to drop into our bodies and learn from it Mm. because it holds so much wisdom that we don't realize until we go there. Yeah. And it's, it's beautiful. It's messy. It's, 
powerful and sticky, Mm -hmm. all of the things and all of it is super worth it to be able to come to a point where we know what our emotions are telling us when they come, we understand ourselves on a very deep level and become grounded in who we are, what we see for ourselves moving forward and what we give our, and what we give permission for ourselves to receive and Mm, create mm, and experience mm. regardless of everything we've been trained on previously. Yeah. And that, that's just incredible work to do for anyone. And, um, a lot, a lot of what I do with my clients, men and women in different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the perfect segue, uh, because, I have experienced your work and feel changed by it. Mm. And by your work, I mean your professional work, but also the work that you've done as a human walking this world, Mm. as a woman walking in this world. And I have experienced your presence, your open heartedness and compassion, your curiosity, your precision, your care. Mm. And it has profoundly changed how I feel in and about myself, in our relationship, in my relationship with Ani and how I work, walk through the world. So it's beautiful. Yeah. I really do feel that way. (laughs) Um, so I know that other people will feel that in this conversation alone, how can people find you and what are some of the fun, exciting things that you're cooking up right now in what you're offering to the world? Yeah. Yeah. I'll start with that. Um, Right now, I currently only have two spaces open for one-on-one consistent therapy clients. Um, And what I'm starting to offer at the beginning of this year is a bunch of new, exciting things. Um, I, I work primarily online with all my clients. We meet through Zoom and they get to create a space that's comfortable for them to be in their essence while we meet in their home. And... So I've been really called to start offering more in-person services. So what's happening now is clients that sign up with me, the first 12 sessions are always virtual. And then we're going to start adding integration sessions is what I'm calling them. Mm. So integration sessions being, you know, maybe we go for a walk in nature and ground ourselves, create safety while we are out in nature in an environment that's maybe unfamiliar or something like that. Always, always safe but maybe edgy for the person. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe it's that I meet with them and their partner for a support session where we have a hard conversation that needs to be had that's facilitated by a third party that's objective. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps, you know, we go out in the world and we practice ordering the coffee that they want exactly how they want it in a confident way to practice stating what they want, how they want it, and stating it from a place of confidence and power, right? Like really just applying the things that we talk about out in the real world. And then we get to process about it. Wow. Amazing. I'm super excited about this work. (gasps) Really, really excited to bring in this, this greater level of accountability for my Mm -hmm. clients to really apply the things we talk about. And also just to have that more of that human connection with my clients and feel their energy in person. And they feel me as well. And, um, additionally, my therapy clients will have the opportunity to do, um, day long intensives, Mm. which is retreat style where, uh, they can, they will stay in an Airbnb Friday night, Saturday night. I come Saturday morning, leave Saturday night. And we have a full day uh, with a theme that we have previously talked about agreed upon usually going to reflect what we've already been working on to really dive deep and integrate Mm -hmm. on a deep level. Uh, Outside of my therapy clients, I work with mental health professionals um, or even just professionals that are working with people in similar ways Mm -hmm. uh, with um, consulting on creating their signature approach to how they want to work with people. So exciting. Which, yeah, I'm really excited about this too. I've already been working with a few women on this and it's been incredible so far. 
Um, there's a lot of work in self-discovery so that people can learn their essential wisdom, the wisdom they've learned from their own healing and transformation and incorporating that into their approach. So combining this essential wisdom that they learned from themselves and their experiences with their training, their education, their certifications, and with their embodied practices, Mm. making sure that therapists are starting to work with clients and suggest resources or practices or rituals that they themselves have tried and know are effective and then helping them create it to be their own with their clients. So that is the type of consulting I do with mental health professionals or professionals that are helping um, other people. And then I'm also offering one-on-one retreats that are two days long for uh, people outside of the therapy container that's similar to the intensive it's retreat like Airbnb, except they get two days and the approach is a bit different and the structure is different, Uh, but that would be available to anyone, people that know me socially, people that live out of state so that they can have the opportunity to work with me in a similar container. Beautiful. Yeah. So people can find me on Instagram primarily under Dr. Dot Meredith. That's Dr. Dot Meredith underscore underscore. And on my Instagram bio, I have a link tree that will take people to my website, which is www.essencetherapyatx.com, as well as other resources I have on there. Um, I will respond to DMs as well. Um, so Instagram's the primary. Instagram and um, my website are the primary ways to reach me. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I will make sure that is included in the show notes for everyone. Girl, I am so happy that you joined me here today. I'm Mm. so grateful you said yes to this podcast recording. I'm so grateful you invited me. Yeah. It's been so much fun. I'm so glad we did this. More to come. More (laughs) to come for sure. Definitely. Um, I invite you all to connect with Meredith on Instagram, check out her website. Um, If there was something that was really impactful for you in this episode, I also invite you to share it out, whether that's Mm -hmm. on Instagram by screenshotting a clip of it or by sharing it with someone who you know would really benefit from this. Be sure to tag Meredith and myself Um, and may this message land and resonate with you in the way that it's meant to. Um, thank you again for being here with me, my dear. Thank you. I'm so excited for this to air. Mm. And for all those listening, wishing you so much love and good vibes. Thank you for tuning in to our very first live recording. More to come. I will see you soon. Kisses. Mwah. <laughs>